Change is always difficult and the Pittsburgh Steelers need a seismic change. You see, there are three types of teams in professional sports. Most people assume that there are good teams, bad teams, and mediocre teams. That's the wrong way to look at it. The three types of teams in professional sports are teams on the rise, teams on the decline, and teams that have stagnated. The Steelers are the latter and because of this, the Steelers fan base is separated into two groups. Those that want to move on from Coach Tomlin and those that want him to stay. Which side is right? Which path will get the Steelers back to championship level football? What is 100% clear is that the Steelers need a plan. A franchise changing plan. A plan that will let them climb the stairway to 7. As it currently stands, Mike Tomlin will be the head football coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024, but situations can change rapidly in a business as cutthroat as the NFL. So let's take a look at both perspectives. A plan where the Steelers retain Coach Tomlin and a plan where the Steelers move on from Coach Tomlin. But first, in order to find a solution to a problem, Problem, you first need to know what the problem is. Mike Tomlin is a great man and football coach, but he does have his flaws. When it comes to his coaching, his poor clock management, he has difficulty winning challenges. Players state after games they were unprepared for what the other team threw at them schematically. They lose to teams they definitely should beat, altering their playoff position. They need help from other teams to make the playoffs semi consistently. They lose playoff games in the first quarter, and he's failed to make personnel changes, either players or coaches, in a timely manner. Seriously, Matt Canada had no business being the Steelers' OC this this year and Presley Harvin hasn't shown he can be a consistent NFL punter. Those are Mike Tomlin's faults as a coach as far as I can tell and they've been happening for years but if you think for one second the Steelers problems are all on coach Tomlin you need to dig a little deeper. The Steelers didn't have a succession plan at quarterback after Big Ben. Trubisky was given a second contract worth 10 million dollars per year. The Steelers have consistently not fired underperforming coaches before a contract runs out. That's not a Tomlin thing that's a Steelers organization thing. In terms of player contracts the Steelers have until TJ Watt's contract been opposed to guaranteeing money after the first year of a contract that dissuades free agents from coming to the Steelers. While Tomlin has stated he likes a smaller coaching staff, if players are stating teams implemented a different scheme as opposed to the one they were expecting, the coaching staff needs to be bigger and coaching duties delegated. The Steelers haven't had a linebacker who can cover well since Shazier and Devin Bush's rookie year. The Steelers had to pull linebackers out of semi-retirement off their couch to play this year. The Steelers typically promote from within and don't spend big money on coordinators like other teams. Before drafting Joey Porter Jr. this year, the Steelers have had a consistent problem finding competent corners either in the draft or through free agency. Are some of these issues related to Coach Tomlin? Of course. He's the head coach and he has some influence when it comes to player personnel, but overall, these are organizational issues that have to be fixed to fit a more modern NFL. The current Steelers have eight main issues they need to correct. They need linebackers that can cover. They need run stoppers. They need elite coordinators and a bigger coaching staff. They need a new punch a new center, a new left tackle, a number two corner, and most importantly, they need a new quarterback. How do the Steelers fix these eight issues? Earlier this season, Colin Cowherd proposed this trade. I would give up Watt, three firsts, and Pickens for Caleb Williams. And I laughed. Why on earth would the Steelers trade multiple first round picks, TJ Watt and George Pickens? That might solve the franchise quarterback issue, but would create holes in other areas on the team. While I still don't agree with his trade proposal, I'm not laughing anymore. The Steelers need to be bold, to stop living in their fears as Coach Tomlin would say. But if the Steelers want to move on from Coach Tomlin, they should not fire him, they should trade him. There's been some chatter about Ben Johnson becoming the head coach of the Washington Commanders. Until the dotted line is signed, nothing is finalized. Would the Commanders instead be more interested in Mike Tomlin. They have a new ownership group looking to turn around the franchise and acquiring Coach Tomlin would definitely go a long way in doing that. What would a trade for Mike Tomlin look like? Last season, the Saints traded Sean Payton in a third round pick to the Broncos for a late first round pick and a second round pick. Tomlin is worth more than that. He's younger, has a stronger resume, and could help turn around the culture in Washington in as little as one season. From the Steelers' perspective, to trade Mike Tomlin, the potential reward would have to be worth it. Here's the trade I came up with. The Pittsburgh Steelers would trade Mike Tomlin, their 2024 first round pick, their 2025 second round pick, and their 2026 first round pick to the Washington Commanders for their 2024 first round pick. Now, Commanders fans might be saying, hey, wait a minute. Why should we give up the opportunity to draft Drake May, a potential franchise quarterback? Because Tomlin is the only known in this trade. Drake May could be a bust. The draft picks the Steelers send, the Commanders could be bust. You know what's for certain? Mike Tomlin. The Commanders completing this trade would provide to them a great head football coach with a new owner that has tons of available resources. Let's assume that the commanders complete this trade with the Steelers. What are the next steps for the Steelers? The next step for the Steelers would be to pair a new quarterback with a young offensive-minded head coach. We've seen teams have success when they've gone that route. Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, 
Matt LaFleur. That young offensive minded head coach hire at this moment is Ben Johnson. He's had some struggles calling plays in the red zone, but so did Sean McVay in a playoff game. It happens. If you look at the whole body of work, Ben Johnson is a great choice for head coach. Once the Steelers have their new head coach and draft capital, they can fix other positions of need. The plan would be to use the pick from the commanders to draft a quarterback, meaning they would have two quarterbacks on the roster under rookie deals. After making some additional cuts to free up cap space, they can go out in free agency and get players like Jalen Johnson, Stephon Gilmer, Patrick Queen, players of that caliber. I know there's beef between the Steelers and Patrick Queen, but money tends to fix all. If they don't want to go after Patrick Queen, they could always go after someone like Jordan Brooks. Now for the most important position in football. The Steelers could attempt to move up to number one by making a swap with the Bears. Based on the NFL CBA, as soon as a draft starts, a team may trade up to four years worth of draft picks, meaning that as soon as the Chicago Bears are on the clock for the 2024 NFL draft, teams may trade draft picks in 2024, 2025, 2026, and 2027. When Washington moved from pick six to pick two to draft RG3, it cost them three first round picks and one second round pick. Moving up to number one is going to cost a bit more. On draft, draft night, a trade might look something like this. The Steelers trade the first round pick they got from the Commanders, their first in 2025 and 2027, a second round pick in 2026, and a third in 2025 for the Chicago Bears first round pick that is number one overall. The Steelers would then draft the best available quarterback. It's January, so things could change, but at the present moment, that quarterback is Caleb Williams. I know, I know, Caleb has concerns. His height and weight, he holds the ball too long, struggled against ranked teams, and some will say he has attitude or off the field question marks. That last one, I don't agree with, but it is something an NFL team should consider when drafting a potential franchise quarterback. Caleb Williams can offset the difficulties of the Steelers offensive line. He's incredible off script, which is what the Steelers are missing at the quarterback position. The Steelers play in a division with Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. They play in a conference with CJ Stroud, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, and Aaron Rodgers. Not to mention we've seen positive flashes from Anthony Richardson and Will Levis, and Tua and Trevor Lawrence have had moments of great football, even if they been inconsistent. To keep up with the other teams in the AFC, the Steelers need an elite quarterback. They need a quarterback that can extend plays. Caleb Williams can be that difference maker. The Steelers need to stop putting a band-aid on an internal bleed. The core Steelers defensive players aren't getting any younger. If the Steelers don't make changes now, they're going to be caught in a situation where not only will the offense need an overhaul, but the defense will too. Even with all that being said and giving Caleb Williams all of his praise, the concerns with Caleb Williams coupled with the fact the Steelers would have to give up tons more draft capital makes trading up to number one a risky decision. The smartest decision would be to stay at pick two and select the best quarterback prospect. Once the Steelers find their quarterback of the future, they can look to fix other positions. The reason the Steelers in these hypothetical trades don't trade away their 2024 second round pick is because they need a center. They should take the best available at that spot. Right now, it looks like Jackson Powers Johnson. The Steelers need an elite quarterback and they shouldn't break the bank for one in free agency. Mason Rudolph played well to end this season, but he isn't the long-term answer for the Steelers. I'm not sold on Kenny Pickett either. He has a bad habit of spinning left out of the pocket with no pressure. While he's a tough SOB, he's constantly hurt hurt, and his worst trait is his inaccuracy on early downs. That was a major difference between him and Mason Rudolph. So quick recap, Steelers trade coach Tomlin to the commanders, hire Ben Johnson and expand the number of coaches in the coaching room, hire either Clint Kubiak or Zach Robinson for offensive coordinator, cut Trubisky, cut Mason Cole, etc. to free up cap space, then go after Jalen Johnson, Stephon Gilmore, or Patrick Queen, etc. in free agency, then draft Drake May and Jackson Powers Johnson. Basically what I expect the Washington commanders to do, they'll hire Ben Johnson, draft Drake May, and put their 90 million in cap space to good use. They might even take their two high second round picks this year, a first or two in future years to move back into the top 10 this year to take one of the elite tackles they need. This is the plan should the Steelers decide to move on from Coach Tomlin. Even though the Steelers have said they won't do this, will they have a change of heart and move on from Coach Tomlin? Highly doubtful. An extension for Coach Tomlin seems way more likely. I would say the likelihood of plan one happening is the lowest possible percentage that isn't zero. So damn near 0%. If the Steelers are not going to move on from Coach Tomlin, can they still fix the previously mentioned problems? Plan 2 isn't too much different from Plan 1. It just becomes increasingly more difficult without the extra draft capital trading Coach Tomlin to the Commanders would bring. There's been a consistent theme with recent Steelers teams, that being that they are a quarterback away from being a legit Super Bowl contender. Well, why don't they trade some of their draft capital and go get a franchise quarterback? The Steelers should still attempt to move up to number 1 in this year's draft. The Steelers pick this year in the first round is pick number 20, so it's going to cost a lot to move up. A trade might look like this. The Steelers trade their first in 2024 
2025 and 2026 and seconds in 2025 2026 and 2027 even with all that draft capital being given up i'm still not sure that's even enough the steelers are likely to be picking at the end of round one and round two and so forth so those first and seconds are late then if caleb williams pans out those first and second round picks would be even later going after the number two overall pick in the draft makes more sense it will cost slightly less than the number one overall pick on draft night the steelers should attempt a trade like this the steelers trade their first in 2024 2025 and 2027 seconds in 2025 and 2026 and a third in 2027 for the commander's first round pick this year number two overall then they should draft their franchise quarterback right now i would say that's drake may at number two if caleb williams is gone a quarterback that has a big arm can throw from different arm angles and can extend plays behind an offensive line that has had its ups and downs some might say the steelers should give kenny pickett more time to develop and give him a better oc i disagree sunk cost fallacy it's better to cut bait earlier rather than later look at what happened with trubisky they paid him 10 million dollars per year so he started games he shouldn't have it's been done before on other teams also fair or unfair the cardinals moved on from josh rosen after just one year to draft kyler murray kyler murray has been a better player than josh rosen if the steelers know they'll have two quarterbacks on the roster with rookie deals they can go out and spend on free agents at positions of need the steelers can use that cap space to sign positions of need like corner linebacker or tackle they can sign jalen johnson or stefan gilmore try to pry Patrick Queen away from the Ravens, they can go out and sign a center or draft one. And then lastly, in terms of player personnel, the Steelers have to go get a new punter. Presley Harvin just hasn't worked out as a punter. He'll have a couple of great weeks where you'll say, oh, he's finally turning it around. And then you'll get several weeks of awful punting. He's too inconsistent and he should not be the Steelers punter next season. The last piece of this entire puzzle is the coaching staff. The Steelers have not had the right coordinators in years. It's time to open up the checkbook for some coordinators that are or will be head coach worthy. The three names the Steelers should focus on for offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, Zach Robinson, and Pep Hamilton. So a quick summary, the Steelers should attempt to give up draft capital to move up to the second overall pick in this year's draft as long as they don't get rid of this year's second round pick they should then take the best available quarterback prospect if the Steelers are a quarterback away from being a viable Super Bowl contender they should do what's necessary to acquire a franchise quarterback they should throw money at and hire a new OC they should draft the best available center in this year's draft in round two they should find a new punter they should move Broderick Jones back to his natural position of left tackle they should make some necessary cuts trades and restructures to free up cap space sign a right tackle corner and linebacker in free agency and they should pick up Najee's fifth year option every indication is that Mike Tomlin will be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers for the foreseeable future. If that's the case, it's time for the Steelers to adhere to my favorite Tomlinism. It's time for the Steelers to be comfortable being uncomfortable. For the Pittsburgh Steelers to get back to championship level football, they need to be bold. They need to take some risks. They need to go out and get a franchise quarterback. They need to stop waiting for one to fall into their lap. They need to stop putting a band-aid on an internal bleed. Because if they don't make some radical organizational changes, if they don't attempt to modernize their approach, we're going to be having the same conversation next year and that that's not the pittsburgh steeler way thank you for your time we ain't gonna, hey, we ain't gonna get conservative and scared rhythm pass play to win